Hello everybody, my name is Mason from Mash Tear Films and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about how I made a slasher movie on a $700 movie budget. Let's get into it. So Bloody First Date is a horror comedy film. It's 12 minutes long. It was my senior capstone film that me and a lot of other classmates worked on and I'm super proud of this film and if you want to check it out, without any spoilers, go down to the description or the comment section because there's a link somewhere down there where you can go ahead and check it out. So I'll just go ahead and wait for you guys. Okay, now that you're done watching it, let's get into how I made this film for $700. First things first, $700, where did that come from? So a reminder, this was my senior capstone film. So it was my way to show off what I learned in film school and have be my final project. So I went to my school's grant program. Basically, it's a student grant association and they will give money to specific projects. So I had to come up with a pitch. I made a pitch deck and explained why I needed $750. They didn't give me the full money. They, they robbed me of $50, but I got that $700 and that was enough because I'm someone who's used to making films for zero dollars or just using my own money. So even having $700 was really, really cool for me. Now we're gonna talk about gear because usually gear is included in your budget. But for me, I was part of this college that had an awesome rental house. So I got to shoot my film on a red Gemini camera. Um, one thing I'm going to say is it's not about the camera. It's about how you use it and how you use your lighting. Now, if I could go back, I would change so many things about the lighting and cinematography of this project. Overall, I'm super proud of it, but after learning more with experience and just working on other sets outside of college, I, I really wish I could go back and remake this film, but it is what it is. Now, if you're at a school, whether it be high school or college, chances are you might have a rental house there where you can go ahead and rent audio equipment and video equipment for free or cheap. Um, if you don't look at other um, ideas, okay? So perhaps you have a public access television studio in your hometown where you can rent video and audio equipment for free. I know I do here in St. Albans, Vermont. So if I do in Vermont, you likely do in whatever town or city you live in. If that doesn't work, use what you have or borrow. Again, it's not about the camera equipment that you have. It's about how you use it. If you can tell a story using cinematography and good lighting, chances are you're gonna be able to captivate your audience better than someone with an awesome camera who has no idea how to use it. Now going along with this idea of using your resources, I think this is super important while writing your film. If you have family members who have access to cool locations, if you have a friend who has an interesting vehicle, if you have a cool little prop that you got as a birthday present, write these into your film. Add production value with stuff you can get for free. I used public spaces in locations where I got family members to help me get access to, to really beef up the production value of this short film. And I may or may not have snuck into some areas where I shouldn't have been filming, perhaps. Now, how do you get access to crew and cast on a $700 movie budget? You ask for favors and you ask for volunteers. Chances are you are in film school and you have a ton of people who want to work on your project. Pitch to people, say, hey, do you want to work on my project? I need a gaffer, I need a grip, I need an assistant director, whatever. Chances are you're going to have people who want to work on your film. And let's say you're not in film school, family and friends will do. If you can be a teacher and teach people how to be a filmmaker, I know there's a lot of people who find that cool and will be down to volunteer on projects and chances are you have people in your life who are able to do it as well. If you are in film school, it's all about networking. So working on other people's projects is always super cool because then they can return the favor. It's a great relationship because you're both learning how to make films together. And as for getting producers and caterers and people to just figure out logistics, your parents are always an awesome option. Now I know my producer, Natalie, 
her parents were super, super cool and they helped out with all of the catering and that was very much appreciated and they made sure that everyone on set was fed and vibes were good because of that. Remember, these are volunteers, you're not paying them, so you better pay them with food because you're gonna have a grumpy crew in cast if you're not doing that. Now this is a slasher film, so there are knife stabs and people getting axed and a guy jumping off a roof. And the way I was able to do all of these things was via the magic of practical effects. Now I have a whole tutorial on how to stab someone without actually stabbing someone. So if you wanna check that out, there'll be a link in the description below. But I will give some insight on how we had our, our buddy James here jump off a roof. Heck it. You can see there that it looks like it was all done in one shot, but in reality, these are two different shots stitched together. You have him jumping off the roof onto a crash mat, and then you have him basically doing a push-up position and propelling himself up and landing from the ground. And we stitched these shots together. We added a fake tilt in post, and voila, you have someone jumping off a roof. Heck it. And by the way, this crash mat was something that I was able to borrow. I have a connection with an athletic director at a nearby school, and I was able to borrow a crash mat and use it for the film. So again, use your resources. Getting creative with practical effects is really the key to pulling off a slasher on a budget. You know, you can't really afford VFX work, and unless you can do that yourself, you're toast if you don't film it in camera. Now that I've given some insight on how we were able to make this movie for $700, I want to go over some of the mistakes that I made making this film. Because every film I feel is a learning experience and I don't think any film is perfect. I think there's always mistakes learned along the way and always things you can do better in practices you can think about when making your next film. Now one mistake is something that I kind of touched on a little bit. It's just bad cinematography and lazy lighting. Um, I think I could have just planned it out better. I think I could have really taken more time lighting the scenes, making it look better, making sure everything was properly exposed. Um, some scenes are done better than others, but I think if I had the cinematography and lighting knowledge I have now, I would have made a better project. And part of that comes with my next mistake, which is wearing way too many hats. Now, I am kind of a control freak on set. I think the assistant director and producer would agree with me. Sorry, Natalie and Morgan, I love you guys. But wearing too many hats will ultimately sink your project and make it worse. You have to have trust in people and you can be a hands-on director. I was the cinematographer for this. I did a lot of the gaffing. Um, I really just liked having control of the project, but you have to realize that delegating is part of being a director. And if you're not working with your crew members and hiring people or having people volunteer in specific roles that you're gonna ultimately crush your project. And I think I had a little bit of that happening on this film. All of these roles exist for a reason and that's something I definitely should have considered while making this film. The final mistake I made was just overall safety. Now I would say for the most part this was a safe set but there were a few examples where I could have done a lot better in securing the safety of the crew in the cast and this is just something that going forward I'm going to think about more often. Think about what could go wrong, what variables of safety are there in every you know, scene and location and just figure out how we can make everything as safe as possible. When you're doing practical effects in stunts in horror movies, you know, there can be a lot of situations that don't seem safe. So by making your film in production as safe as possible, you're gonna get the best results. Learn from the mistakes of others. There are situations, even in Hollywood, that you can think about where safety took a backseat and you don't wanna be the production where someone gets hurt because that's the last thing you'd want on a fictional film is someone actually getting hurt. So there it is. That is the behind the scenes of Bloody First Date and how I made a slasher film on a $700 movie budget. I hope you guys check out the short film Bloody First Date. A lot of people put a lot of time and effort into this film and ultimately we are super proud of this thing. We think it's funny. We think people will find it entertaining and it's already got maybe 900 views on YouTube and we're hoping to get those numbers up into the thousands. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you learned something or can take something away from this video. Best of luck on your next filmmaking project.
Peace out, everybody.